Okay, I wanted to throw in a couple of extra examples here and make sure you understand. It says approximate the area from 0 to 4 of 2x dx. In other words, we have the function 2x and we want to know what is the area beneath the curve of y or f of x equals 2x above the x-axis on the interval 0 to 4. And then it says using R4, again that's my notation, that R4 means we're going to use four rectangles and the right endpoint of every single one of those rectangles. So let's just do this real quick. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this the exact method. So if I want to find the exact area beneath the curve, how do I find the exact area beneath the curve? We'll just do the actual integral. Okay, so let's do the definite integral. The integral of 2x would be 2x squared over 2. Of course, it's plus c, but because it's a definite integral, we don't need plus c. So that seems like it would be x squared on the interval from 0 to 4. Plug in our upper limit, 4 squared minus our lower limit, 0 squared. Nice and easy because that's a 0. So I'm getting an exact area of 16. That is not what this problem asked for. This problem said we want to estimate it. And if we want to estimate it or approximating it, we need to use rectangles. So let's approximate it using rectangles. Think about that process again. How many rectangles do I want? I want four rectangles. Which point am I going to be using? I'm going to be using the right endpoint of each one of those. What's the width of my rectangle? Well, we do the delta x, sorry, is the right endpoint, which is four, minus the left endpoint, which is zero divided by the number of rectangles, which was four rectangles. So that gives me a width of one for every single one of my rectangles. I come in here and I draw that number line. I'm looking from zero to four. I need four rectangles. So it's three slices. I add the width, which is one every single time. So zero, one, two, three, four. And then here's the nice one. I don't need to use those midpoints. I get to use those right endpoints of all four of those rectangles. So when I'm plugging in, the numbers that I'm going to be plugging in are 1, 2, 3, and 4. I plug it into the function to find the height. The height is going to be, the function is 2x to find that width. I'm going to use delta x, which in this case is 1. So all I'm doing is multiplying each one of those things by 1. Kind of silly to write that, but that's what it is. And that gives me my area. And then I'm going to add all those areas together. So let's plug in 1. I'm not even going to use a table on this one. This is too easy for me. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. And 4 times 2 is 8. So the area would be 2, 4, 6, and 8. Add those numbers together. And you're getting an estimated area of, well, let's see what we're getting. I'm getting 20 units. So if we estimated the area, we're getting an approximate value of 20. If we wanted to find the exact area, we'd be getting 16. Let's go ahead and look at example 6 here. It says approximate the integral from 2 to 8 of x squared minus x cubed dx using L3. So what the heck does that mean? So what we're doing is we're not evaluating the definite integral. That would be the exact area. We're actually going to approximate that area using three rectangles in the left endpoint of each one of those rectangles. So you can always do the definite integral to check your answer for realisticness. Is it, is it reasonable? Um, but let's just do the, the actual problem. So it says in how many rectangles we want three rectangles. Okay, the next question is which point are we going to be using to determine the height? We're going to be using the left endpoint of each one of those. We need to find the width of every single one of those intervals. So the right endpoint is 8, the left endpoint is 2. Divide that by the number of rectangles, which was 3. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the width of each rectangle is 2. We draw our interval here, 2 to 8. I need 3 rectangles, so I'll cut that up. I'm going to add 2 each time, because that's my width. So 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so that worked out. And then thinking about your rectangles, you have rectangle 1, 2, and 3. I want the left endpoint of each one of those rectangles, so that would be 2 would be the left endpoint of the first, 4 would be the left endpoint of the second, and 6 is the left endpoint of the third rectangle. So those are my x values. I need to find my height, my width. Multiply those together gives me my area. Okay, remember I'm plugging in the numbers 2, 4, and 6. 
my width, or sorry, to find the height, I plug it into the function, which was x squared minus x cubed. To find the width, that's always delta x, which in this case is 2. I multiply the height times the width, which gives me my area. And then I'm going to add those areas together to get the total. So go ahead now, plug this into your calculator, or do it by hand, whatever you prefer to do. And let's see what you're getting. On the first one, I'm getting a height of negative 4. Next one, I'm getting negative 48. And the next one, I'm getting negative 180. I multiply those times the width, which is 2. So I'm getting negative 8 is the area of my first rectangle. I'm getting negative 96 is the area of my second one. And negative 360 is the area of my third one. So when I sum all of those together, what am I getting total? I'm getting negative 464. Well, let's think about that real quick. What the heck did negative values mean here? How can you have a negative area? And if you remember from the previous section, all negative means here is this graph is actually below the curve uh, or below the x-axis. So all my y values are negative. So the area is 464. The negative sign just indicates that that's 464 square units that are below the x-axis. So I hope that helps you figure out how to approximate definite integrals using rectangles. And again, the whole entire point of approximating um, rectangles or using rectangles is to break it into small pieces and find the area of each small piece and then add it up. In this case, we broke it into three small pieces, found the area of the three small pieces and added them together. If we wanted it to be exact, we wouldn't be breaking it into three pieces, we'd be breaking it into an infinite number of pieces.